Promotional consideration for Prep Recruiting Insider is provided by Moe's Pizza, the best pizza on the West Bank. Stop by before or after the game at Moe's, 1112 Avenue H in West Wego. Check out their full menu online at Moe'sPizzaNola.com and tell them you heard about it on PRI. And welcome back to Prep Recruiting Insider here at NOLA Motorsports Park. I'm Rick Gailey, the coach of PRI, along with our eye in PRI, <laughs> Mr. Rene Nato. And we are now ready for the Lamarck legend of the game, sponsored by the Lamarck Motor Car, Car Company at the big store in Kenner. Go see the Lamarck Brothers out on Williams Boulevard so that they can put you in the car or truck that suits you, your lifestyle, and your pocketbook. And our legend of the game is a true legend. Even though I coached him one year and in spite of that became a success, Lionel Washington, co-offensive coordinator, defensive backfield coach at Tulane University, a recent inductee into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame and also the New Orleans Sport, Sports Hall of Fame. Who thought in such a short period of time, <laughs> Lionel, that you would be a Hall of Fame legend? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those things, I guess hard work does pay off. Um, that's one thing I, I took a lot of pride in working hard, trying to give it my best at everything and anything I did. And uh, I reaped some of the rewards last, week, last year. 15 years in the NFL, Lionel, and uh, you faced some quarterbacks, Dan Marino, uh, Brett Favre, uh, Joe Montana, uh, and wide receivers, Jerry Rice, Michael Irvin, Terrell Owens, uh, James Loft, and Steve Largent. When you faced a quarterback, who brought out the best in you, and same thing for receiver, who brought out the best in Lionel Washington? I think quarterback was Elway, John Elway, the Denver Broncos. Uh, he was athletic, he can run, he can throw, talk a lot of crap, but uh, <laughs> you know, that's one of those guys that just brought out the best in me because you know, I always look at him and say, I'm going to pick you off today. And, and it happened once or twice. But, you know, it was, he was the guy that I got, really got up for to play. And wide receivers, of course, is going to be Jerry Rice, known as one of the best receivers to ever play the game. And, um, you know, Jerry was a challenge week in and week out. And for a period of maybe five or six years we had played against San Francisco, Jerry never caught a touchdown pass against the Oakland Raiders or L.A. Raiders at that time. Mm. And Al Davis decided he wanted to talk about it, talk trash in the paper. And, Monday night game, Jerry Rice took every, all four of our DBs to town that week. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it is Jerry Rice, you know, he's that type of athlete that's going to make you give it your best and do your best because that's what he's going to give you play in and play out. 15 years in the NFL uh, is, is almost unheard of uh, at, at the cornerback position, uh, especially in your game with certainly uh, speed and quickness. But uh, the incentive now to play that long is much greater with the salaries that they're, that they're making in, in the league now. So you had to be a bit ahead of your time in your off-season preparation uh, to be able to play that long and to be effective that long as a speed guy in the NFL. Tell us about uh, not only your hard work, there's a lot of people that work hard, but you had to be ahead of your time in your training methods. Well, the thing, thing I did, I didn't know a whole lot about training methods and all that. I, all I did was worked hard. I, I know I had to run and be in better shape than anybody that I'm going to come in contact with. Um, Jerry Rice came in about a year or so after I did, and he showed, he was showing him, was, he was showing everybody the type of workout he did. So I want to make sure that I stay competitive against guys like Jerry and Jim Lofton and um, some of the top receivers during my time. Um, so I make sure each off season I took a week off and I got right back to training because I know if I wanted to be competitive, I didn't think about how long I was going to play. I just wanted to be worried about the next year, how I was going to go out and compete and be competitive and, and do the best job I can possibly do. You're the co defensive coordinator at Tulane right now, but going back to your playing days, playing under Larry Smith and Vince Gibson, and you played with some great offensive teams, Rock Connors and, and Ronnie Holman and Eddie Murray, a great kicker, but that 81 team defense you were on only allowed 13 points a game for the Green Wave. A great squad. It was. We had some good football players on that team at that time, and it reminds me somewhat of the team we have, defensive team we have right now, a guy that's going to play hard, snap in and snap out. I mean, every time we get an opportunity, we try to make plays, and, and that's the way we are playing now that we play. Also, we played back then when I played also. So it's one of those situations where you want to always 
have a team ready to fo play football, and that's how I'm coaching. That's how I play it. Uh, I, I'm trying to deviate too far away from my playing my playing style, and my coaching style have some of the same similarities, and um, hopefully that can rub off on some of the players that I come in contact with during the course of a football season, and, and that's where we have played over the last couple of years. And in 1982, when I was coaching the special teams at Tulane, we mm -hmm. had a chance to work together. And while the season overall didn't turn out the way that we wanted to, we were able to accomplish something that I'm afraid no other Tulane team is going to be able to do. We went up to Baton Rouge and, and beat LSU up there. Uh, talk about your remembrances of the preparation that week and, and that game. <laughs> it's just like yesterday, of course, that's how I remember it that well because that's one of the games Coach Gibson always said, we're going to go up and beat them. We're going to shock the world. I think Buddy Deliberto was still doing sports at that time. And he says, no way. He said, he'll go to Russia before, you know, we'll beat LSU that, that, that Saturday. And um, we went out there. We said, we had nothing to lose. LSU was going to the Orange Bowl. And we went out there and played our butts off, man. Everybody played for each other. And we played hard. And defensively, I remember we played, I mean, played extremely hard. And it was wet and muddy and all that good stuff. Yeah. But you know, we hung in that tough. And at the end, we came out victorious. You coaching at Tulane, you're a recruiter. If I can turn the tables right now, going back to when you recruit, what message would you have for the recruits watching this show right now that what's most important in the recruiting process that uh, when, when you have to go through it, what are you looking for as a recruit? As a recruit, I'm looking for a kid that's going to come in, it's going to be a good student academically. You know, a good, secondly, a, a good student of the game, and thirdly, uh, I guess a good person. Help develop him to become a, a, a young man that somebody's going to turn out to be good in the community, a good citizen, going to do all the right things that they need to do. Um, but he had changed some from the time I played. You know, I was being recruited by Buddy Geis. Uh, Buddy came in and, 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 and they wanted me and they offered me first before anybody else got a chance to offer me. And, and I committed. And my dad said, yeah, you committed to them, you're going to go to them. Because the other school came, came after me later. And he said, no way. You know, once you committed, Stay, stay and talk to you, commit, stay good to your word, and that's what I did. I stayed to my word, kept my word, and everything worked out for me. You know, it's not where you play, it's, it's how you play when you get there. And then Tulane gave me an opportunity to go in and learn, get an excellent degree from Tulane, and um, able to play football there for three years. I'm a three year starter, played my, my freshman year also, but I didn't start, but I played. And I learned and understood what I need to do as an athlete and also as a student. So that part of it, Tulane's going to give any athlete that if you want to come to Tulane and be a success, I think the thing you have to do is come there knowing that you have to work hard and do whatever it's going to take to be successful on and off the football field. And that's what we're going to bring, and that's what we're looking for in kids, and that's how we can continue to win this year. I think kids buying into what CJ is talking about, uh, academics, uh, being a young man that could stand up and be counted on and be counted for. So um, I think that part of it is something that we're instilling these young kids right now and we can continue to do that. And that's Coach Lionel Washington of the Tulane Green Wave, a greenie through and through both as a player and as a coach. Thank you for being the Lamarck legend of the game, Lionel. It's a special pleasure to be with him today. We're here at Nola Motorsports Park in Avondale, and we're going to talk more about the Grand Prix of Louisiana when we come back after this timeout.